Hi everyone, uh, my name is Franz Rotenbach and I want to show you something really interesting. I've got here with me the software for the first microcomputer. Guys, um, these modules contain the software for the first microcomputer that was ever built, that was ever used. Um, if you look really closely, I don't know if it's going to focus on this, but this is from Flight 202, Apollo Flight 202. You can see the NASA uh, serial numbers in there. Um, these modules are the authentic Flight AS202 software modules. These were found on, on a rubbish dump, on a scrap metal heap, uh, about 40 years ago by a gentleman. He kept these around all this time. And um, we are going to extract the software from this module. Um, I've got six of these modules. Uh, we're going to pull the software from this, um, and this is going to be pretty amazing. Let me unpack these for you uh, to show you that I've got the full set here. Okay, so that's module B28. Um, these rope memory modules, there's, there's quite a lot of information about them on the, on the internet, but there's really no in-depth technical information. I've been working on these for the past 18 months. Uh, not these exact modules. I received just uh, these just the other day. Um, but I think we figured out how these modules worked and we're at the point where we can extract the software from these modules. Um, and that, my friends, is the first computer in the world software. The first microcomputer. Let me be very explicit about that. Um, this was the first computer to use integrated circuits or microchips. Um, it was the first computer in space. It was the first fully reprogrammable computer, microcomputer that you could change the software. It's not a, a dedicated custom built thing like they used in the, in the missiles and the other rockets prior to this. Um, this is the real stuff. This, these modules contains microcomputer software version 1.0. I've wired up the first rope memory module um, and I'm going to plug this into my rope memory reader. Uh, so let me show you that. Okay, uh, so I've connected my rope memory module to my uh, reader, uh, my rope memory reader. Um, I've got um, 16 data lines that I'm reading. I'm reading two bits at a time. And then I have my um, core uh, uh, inhibit lines um, that I'm driving here. I've also got core select lines that selects uh, the four different planes, uh, core planes for me. And then I also have the eight uh, uh, strand select lines that I'm uh, going through. So um, all of this is driven by um, this little computer. It's a Linux computer called a Red Tire and that pulses the cores for me, sets up all the signals and pulsing everything and then reading two bits at a time in here and this all gets locked uh, onto my computer. Um, for this I've actually set up my oscilloscope to show um, the, the, the data bits as I'm reading it. Uh, so you can see two bits at a time being read um, and you can follow that. I'm just going to start that and then you can see um, how I'm reading the, the rogue memories. Okay, so if you look at the oscilloscope you'll see that the bit sometimes goes to 1 or uh, 1 is also a negative pulse or a positive pulse. If it's in the middle, it's a 0. So sometimes it's in the middle, sometimes it pulses high or low. Um, and that's the, the data coming out of the rope memory. To show that I'm reading consistent data from the rope memory, I've changed my logging software slightly to read the same data bit 16 times uh, in a row. Uh, and you can see it does, there's no dramatic change between um, each of those reads. For the 50th anniversary of Apollo Flight AS202, um, I plan to make the raw data that I captured from these rope memories um, available to anybody uh, who is willing to take up the challenge 
to uh, analyze and extract the software from this. I will post further information on my YouTube channel. So please subscribe and um, I'll let you know when the data is available.